afternoon, friends, countrymen, and whoever else is watching this. I told you I was gonna do more long form content. I said I was gonna do it, so here I am doing it. Today, we are gonna talk through my rep book and what's in it and what's not in it and what should be in it, okay? Because a lot of people have asked me what's in my rep book and I feel like I should just make a video about it now because I tried doing ones on like TikTok and Instagram. It takes too long, you guys. It takes too long and I don't feel like doing it. Not sponsored, but this is my favorite snack ever. My new favorite snack. Uh, it's the Quaker Cheddar Rice Crisps. They are so good. I've eaten an entire bag of these in one sitting, which isn't like, I'm not bragging. That's not great. Accompanying me is my Olipop and cream soda. Oh, so now I got cream soda, Olipop, Cheddar Rice Crisps. Rice Crisps. Let's get going. <laughs> All right, this audition season, it's been kind of whack. If you don't know what a rep book is, I'm going to tell you. Rep book is what actors use, either like actors who are just doing, you know, plays or, or uh, film or musical theater actors. Um, a rep book is essentially a book, <laughs> duh. A rep book is essentially a binder that has a bunch of songs in it that you could sing at any moment. So anything that's in your rep book, you should be able to sing at any moment in time. Great, great, this is my rep book. It's usually just a black binder, one inch thick. Okay, it's messy right now. Don't judge it, it's messy right now. I don't have it reorganized. I'm in the midst of reorganizing it. So please guys, no judgment, okay? You open up this bad boy. You get my headshot, gorgeous. The first headshot, it's cut off at the top here. Don't pay attention to that. You get the second one, gorgeous. Little tip, people are gonna tell you to go get your headshots printed at some professional place. This may be controversial, but I don't agree with that at all. Okay. I don't think you need some special printer to print out your headshot and resume. I feel like as long as it looks good and you can put your headshot and resume together, print it on either side, like you get the paper fits and like you can staple it, it's fine. I go to Walgreens and print mine off. Like I really don't think you need a fancy printer, whatever. That's a whole other story because I just think that's a waste of money and a waste of your time. The amount of times, excuse me, this goes for resumes too, but the amount of times I've had to reprint my resume out, so many times. There's no way I'm getting it front and back on a glossy paper that's fancy schmancy. Your performance matters more than this. Now, if this is like a poorly put together resume or the headshot's really bad, that's different. The way you print it out though matters so much less. That is a separate rant. Let's get started on actually the rep book. Okay, the first thing I have in here is my Golden Age songs, right? So for Golden Age, I have an uptempo to ballad. My uptempo is going to be Shopping Around from Wish You Were Here. Really, really like this one. Uh, the ballad, is going to be Might As Well Be Spring from State Fair. So you always wanna make sure you have up-tempo and ballad, then I have a couple of other ones in there just in case. Great. That's gonna be my golden age section. Anything Rodgers and Hammerstein. The second thing I have is jazz. Now this one's, mm, you don't necessarily have to have a jazz grouping, but like, sorry, section, but I do. So I have the It's In His Kiss, the share version, um, cause it kind of goes a little Jersey Boysy, a little more jazzy. Um, when It All Falls Down, and I get a kick out of you from Anything Goes. Those are all sort of like, they, they are more jazzy. Now I know that Anything Goes kind of falls into the golden age, but it's more of a swing jazz. So that's why it's sort of in the jazzy area. So I have golden age, jazz. Now we're moving on to contemporary. Contemporary musical theater. I have Safer from First Date. That one I've been doing for a while. I've kind of had that one in my book for a while. Um, I also have Life I Never Led in there as well. And then, I have several, excuse me. I have like more than one or two up-tempo um, for contemporaries because contemporary is so big right now. So I have Life I Never Led, Anywhere But Here, uh, Safer from First Date, and Dying Ain't So Bad from Bonnie and Clyde. So those are sort of my um, kind of go-tos when it comes to contemporary. I have other ones in there that are like kind of outliers that like, oh, it's, this one fits more of the style of that one, of this show, so I'm gonna use it. So I have other ones in there, but those are the ones I sort of keep in rotation. Um, I do have a Sondheim section that I'm reworking right now. So that would be the next se section. Um, it's only when I ever auditioned for Sondheim because the rule is kind of don't audition for a, with a Sondheim song unless you're auditioning for a Sondheim show because it's really hard to play and it's a very specific style. So I had um, one from Merrily Roll Along, Not A Day Goes By. And then I was working on another up-tempo. I cannot remember what it was, but there's a couple different up-tempos that I'm working on for Sondheim. So I'm in the midst of workshopping that, but you should have an up-tempo and a ballad for Sondheim as well. All this advice I'm giving, it's more like I'm just trying to be transparent and share with you what I have. I am a mezzo-soprano with a alto -y range. Um, I wouldn't consider myself like a high, high soprano at all. It's not in my range. I'm definitely a belter. You can even hear it in my voice, but I'm just trying to be transparent. So take it as advice if you want it, or just take it as, Interesting. Um, for my rock, my pop and rock, I have High Enough from Rock of Ages because I understudied Sherry. 
high enough. I have Smash the Mirror from The Who's Tommy. And I have Superboy and the Invisible Girl from Next to Normal, which is kind of raw, kind of pop. Mm. And then I was gonna add into it, um, there was a pop song. I think it was an Olivia Rodrigo song that I added just recently, but I have to find it. It was one of the Olivia Rodrigo songs that I'm adding to my pop in case somebody wants to hear a pop song. Because it's, you might get asked to do it, you might not, but the point is like, to have the option. And then I have a Disney section. And this is particularly for anything that's like written by Alan Menken. Um, so a lot of like Newsies or um, The Little Mermaid or Aladdin, like those are all gonna be the more of the Disney ones. So I've watched what happens from Newsies. Cause duh, it's a patter song and I love patter songs. I have, excuse me. I have More to the Story from Shrek the Musical, which is a cut song. And then God Help the Outcasts from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. There are other ones in here that I, again, I might be revising my Disney, so we'll see, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Essentially, my sections are uh, Golden Age, Jazz Musical Theater, Contemporary Musical Theater, Sondheim, and Disney. Now, oh, Pop and Rock, Sondheim and Disney. More can be added in there, like some people think a post-Golden Age is a good one to have. Um, I should probably have more in my Pop and Rock just because that's in my, in my range. Everyone has different opinions about how much they think sh should be in your resume. People are gonna be like, you should only have five songs. Some people are gonna be like, you should have 20. Some people I've, I've seen, on they walk into an audition and their book is like this thick. And I'm like, couldn't be me. Because at any point, the point is to have this book, and this happened to me once at an audition, where they open the book up, you sing the song that you came prepared with, and they said, what else do you have? And sometimes they pick it for you. Like sometimes, like I've had the pianist go through once and just like look through my book and be like, she has this. And he's like, great, can you sing that? You have to be prepared to sing that even if you didn't prep it. Which means you have to know all the songs in your book. And... If you have 20 songs, like not just know how to sing them, like know how to act them and have choices for them and be very specific about those choices. And so I don't recommend having like 30 songs in your book. I think it's better to have a few that you're really, really good at. Now you should have range, like you should have ballads and you should have up tempos. Um, again, I'm in the midst of revising my stuff. I have a couple more ballads I wanna add to there. A more jazzy song, but it's also kind of contemporary, but that one's specific to the show. So there, I do have stuff in there, but I would just say a wide range is probably best. I don't know how many songs are currently in my book. And again, like I said, I'm revising. To know like 30 songs and know how to act them immediately, I'm not saying that's hard, that just might be a little exhausting. So I think it's better to have like, you know, 10 to 20, maybe not 20, I don't know, that you solidly know. You wanna make sure you have a group of songs that you know and that you're solid on, right? As opposed to like 30 that you're like, these aren't that great. Right? And I know some people um, also <clears throat> label theirs really well. Like they'll have a, a cheat sheet sort of, eh, a cheat sheet sort of at the front where it's like an index. So like just go into Google Doc and write, like I got these tabbies from Target and I just put them in like that says Disney and I, okay, I've lost a lot of them. I Sondheim's right here, so just don't look at them right now. It'd be Golden Age Jazz, uh, Contemporary, Pop Rock, Sondheim, Disney. So that the person can just flip to, or you can just flip to the page that you want to be at. And then having like something at the front, like a piece of paper at the front that's just, hey, this is what page number, this is what like is in this book. So that somebody can just flip to the front and be like, I can look through here and see what's in the book as opposed to having to flip through your entire book just to see what you have prepared, right? Anyway, that was a quick rundown. If you have any questions or thoughts, put them in the comments. Also, if you feel like subscribing, you can do that too. If you feel like liking the video, that would be also kind of cool. Uh, I'm trying to upload a lot more long form content on here. And it might be more like this, a little more casual and it might be more vloggy and it might be more travel and it might be more theater stuff. So sort of all of the above, but what I'm trying to focus on is just like being transparent with y'all about what's in my book or what an uh, equity audition is or what a day in my life looks like as a actor who's like trying to get booked, you know? Um, and how I'm trying to balance that life of being an actor with like a life of travel, because I love traveling. But traveling and being in like an audition season don't always coincide super well together. So I'm trying to be transparent about that, just trying to figure it out myself. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for coming along. Questions, comments, put them down there. And I would love to answer them. And I would love to hear y'all's thoughts about everything. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. If you don't, I whatever. It's totally fine. And um, I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Uh, go get your Olipop. Update your app book. I need some Quaker Oats Rice Crisps. Ah! Okay, bye.